it depends really is the answer to a lot of things. So what does it depend on? It depends on so many different things. It, it depends on the question you're asking. What it depends on is like the weird meta answer here. Um, it's like, what is this a new side? Is this a site that is literally doing a site move? Is it an actual site move? Or are I just like changing the URL structure or something? Uh, what does your service setup look like? Um, how fast is your website? What is the content looking like? Is there a lot of competition around this piece of content? Uh, is it a duplication of content that is somewhere else? And it depends on so many different things because as you might figure out, the entire process on our side, the entire infrastructure on our side is very large and vast and complex. Hello and welcome to another episode of SEO Mythbusting. Today with me is Barry Schwartz. Uh, you might know him from Twitter and Search Engine Roundtable. Very happy to have you here. Welcome to SEO Mythbusting, and we're going to talk a little bit about community. Awesome! Thanks for having me in your awesome office. <laughs> yeah, all the like secret <laughs> blueprints and stuff. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> They're not that so secret anymore. So um, when I reached out to you to check if you're available to like do this, uh, you said you wanted to talk about um, the relationship between Google and the SEO community. So one thing that, that does puzzle me a little bit um, is that we are trying to be as transparent as possible to people and we are balancing between like being transparent and being confusing. But we are oftentimes met with like this, like, I don't know, um, idea that we are withholding truth or like we are we're having like a different intention than what we are saying we do which is not the case like where, where does that come from we have to understand that these are these are people building out content in order mm. to get traffic to their websites and in some examples where either you have feature snippets mm. where the traffic where these publishers believe you're taking their content and putting it on your own website right the google search results mm -hmm. and people don't have to click on from the Google search results right. to their website, because all the, the answer that you answer the query right in that on the Google search results page. Because of that, people feel like, you know, why am I doing this? Why mm. should I go ahead and write content that I'm getting zero traffic from, which I'm not going to convert on? But yes, I see that. I see that. I understand that. Uh, we hear that a lot. But um, we already know from studies and from experience reports from the community that you oftentimes get a lot more qualified traffic. You get better traffic to your, your site from featured snippets. Well, maybe. I mean, there's been studies <laughs> going both ways on that. Fair enough. And it would be great if you guys could go ahead and publish your own internal data or share in Google Search Console mm. to show what this specific publisher is getting from right. featured snippets. A little filter, say, filter my performance reports by featured snippets. And you can see your click-through rate, your impressions, right. all that data, and I think if it's positive, I think the community will be very happy. All right. Well, I'm not so sure about that because like, there's always a little bit of, of uh, agenda behind it. And um, yeah, different people have different, different angles to this. And I think it's important to understand that fundamentally, if you have content that is really useful for the users and you add more value around it because your site is, is full of good content, then I think these can drive a lot of traffic. But I think like the complaints might be coming from people where the traffic, the content is maybe not as great, but I mean, like there's bits and pieces that we can pull out for the user, but like the user has no incentive to actually go there. So it's like a. Uh... I mean, a lot of this stems from I'm in the U.S., so I've been seeing on the TV mm -hmm. a lot of governmental, like the Congress and Senate, right. talking about yeah. these studies that were produced by different uh, people in the industry or outside the industry, even data providers, saying Google's taking the lion's share of the clicks, meaning. Mm -hmm. People are going to Google, and Google's sending less and less traffic day by day to publishers. And that's a trend that scares the SEO, webmaster, developer, right. and publishing community. Right. But that's not something that we want to do. I mean, what, what we want to do is we want to bring people and the content publishers together. That's literally like the fundamental idea of the search engine, and we're trying our best to make that happen. Um, but we also know that sometimes the intention is not to do more on the publisher's side, like if, if the user wants to follow through, that's great for both of us, uh, for the publisher, for us. But if it's traffic that doesn't lead anywhere, if it's like the zombie traffic, then huh, that's a that's a tricky one to deal with. But I, I see where you're coming from and I 
I hope that we can get more transparency and, and uh, visibility to these issues in the hands of developers and yeah, and, and uh, maybe that will maybe that will backfire if you give more transparency. Maybe it'll be better for better for everybody. Who knows? That's that's the thing that I find very interesting that you're saying that because that's something that we keep experiencing that when we are trying to be as transparent as possible, that sometimes people are taking us out of context or like misrepresenting what we were saying, um, and then are like we are in this weird lose lose situation. Right? We, we provide more transparency, we lose. We provide less transparency, we lose. That's a tricky one to deal yeah. with. I mean, I've been, I'm, obviously, you know, you know, I write about this transparency. Yes. And mm -hmm. it's just funny because the more transparent you are, it's like you, you lose, it's like a lose lose situation. And I've been covering this for so long. Sometimes you would, over the history, you've pulled back some transparency and then you've increased it. And now it's like, I think it's the highest it's ever been in the community. Mm. It's it's I don't know I don't know the answer to it I mean right. I think being as transparent as possible is ultimately going to be the best honesty is the best thing you can do without stabbing yourself yeah. in the foot yeah we're we're not trying like to to misdirect you or we're not lying to you so how can we make this into a win win situation I think like we are doubling down on being transparent uh, is definitely the way that we want to go and we just hope that the community picks that up. And uh, well, I mean, again, I think what you're doing today at these videos, what you've been mm -hmm. doing on the Webmaster uh, YouTube channel for a long time, yeah. the activity that you and your whole team at the Webmaster Trends team is putting out on Twitter, on the forums and everywhere. And I think that is what you need to keep doing because otherwise, it's I mean, it, it's just proof. It's actual proof and truth. You're on the field doing what you need to yeah. do. Yeah, even just um, not so long ago, you held the Google Webmaster Conference and you're having mm -hmm. them around the world, but you had a big one in Mountain View. Mm -hmm. And I, people are Google engineers sitting there taking notes, seeing what they could actually learn from the SEO community and the publishing community yeah. and trying to make it. And they're trying to say, all right, that's an interesting point of view that I didn't have. You're taking that feedback. You're going to hold yeah. all of Google search consoles based on yeah. feedback from the yeah, community. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's and so many things. I wish more people would use the submit feedback button. Like that is so helpful because if you're reporting it over Twitter, it doesn't really go anywhere. Uh, if you're reporting it over over our Twitter accounts or talk to us in person, then we're like, okay, sure. I bring that to the search uh, search console team, and they're like, that's one opinion out of many opinions that we hear every day. But if you're using the submit button, like the submit feedback button, um, we actually get like quantitative data of what the people want, and that's actually. I know that we're not like talking back. We can't answer everyone submitting feedback right. there. But we are taking this in and we are trying to make the things happen that we see are important. That's how the speed report happened. Yeah. I mean, constantly. It's amazing how much you push out with Search Console. And again, it's not really making you guys a dime. It's just more yeah. about transparency. So. It's about transparency. So let's hope that um, that gets us, gets us all together as, a, as one community further in building good stuff for the web. I hope so. Right. Yeah. And then you have all the people thinking like, hey, oh, you have Chrome, you have Android, and you're tracking <coughs> all these users, and you're saying, hey, why aren't you using this data for search? Mm. It's a great way to improve search, but then you looked at Direct Hit, which was a big search engine back in the day, mm. and they used click data, and they were manipulated by a bunch of people clicking on results and so forth. It is very noisy as a, as a data source. It's so nobody believes useless. you. Why don't yeah. people believe you? I wish to know <laughs> this. I don't understand that either. Uh, and I think like it's partly... Confirmation bias, people like to hear the things that confirm their hypothesis. That's just like psychology. Um, and on the other hand, it is maybe this like feeling or perception that we are trying to hide the truth. I mean, conspiracy theories are quite well off these days. Well, it's easy for people to think that, of course, because yeah. you can't tell the full truth in all situations because potentially people can manipulate the search results. That's one thing. The other thing is also just like... When I say, no, we're not using it for ranking, then I mean exactly that. And we might use it for A-B testing of different ways of presenting things in the front end, or we might be using it for I don't know what. But um, people are or tend to only hear the bits they want to hear, and then you get misrepresented, and then we have to clean up that rather than doing other good things for the community. I mean, so one example um, is with AMP. When mm -hmm. you released AMP, there was a, when you initially released it, there were people on different t sides of the coin, Google Ads team, Google Search team, and other teams in the AMP right. community as well, saying different things and communicating different things, which confused the larger community. Right. Some were saying it is a ranking factor, some were saying it's not. And AMP, um, while it is not a ranking factor in mm. the core rankings, the only way to get to that top carousel is to be AMP, to have AMP, to have AMP pages. Mm -hmm. And it, you, people look at that top carousel and say that's the top position. Mm. 
if you want to be over here, you don't need AMP. If you want to be over here, you need AMP. And to be yeah. number one, you need, that's kind of like a ranking fact. I actually don't even know if we still do that. Like, I know that the top carousel is an organic feature, but I'm not sure if you're still requiring AMP. But initially, we'll, we'll get it in the description of the video because I don't know at this point. Right. But initially, but initially when okay. it was launched, mm -hmm. that was the only way to get AMP okay. there. It might not be that way today. Right. But initially, when it was first launched, the only way to be in the AMP, uh, in the top AMP, top stories carousel was to have AMP. Right. Okay. Fair enough. That, yeah. Right. But it's, as you say, it's not really a ranking factor. The AMP team obviously believes in what they're doing and they're doing a fantastic job at what they're doing. They, ha they solve really, really hard problems. They also give uh, developers at publishing companies uh, a leverage to basically say like, oh, no, we cannot have this very slow tracking thing here. We cannot have this terrible piece of JavaScript on our site because then it would not be conformed to AMP. So that's a really, really helpful tool. There's a lot of privacy and, and security implications around the entire like distribution of other people's uh, content. And we want to catch that and make that quick. Uh, you can't preload for many interesting reasons um, that easily. And that's where the signed exchange bundle came from. But that's not really like being looked at much. And that's not really being like in investigated or, or considered much. So like AMP is being seen as what it was a couple of years ago, I would say. Right. And people are misunderstanding what the idea is. The idea is not to break the web. The idea is not to create a Google-centric web. The idea is to create a web that is fast for the user and is successful for the user. And the matter of fact simply is, in a bunch of countries, in what we call the next billion users countries, the web as it is seen is either like a bunch of mobile apps or like a bunch of very proprietary uh, walled gardens. And that's what we are trying to alleviate and fix by making the web fast and accessible for these users. Um, and AMP is the vehicle to get there, yet people are like, oh, what's happening yeah, here? Yeah, I mean, I mean, Google always going to be held to a higher standard and that gives you guys a lot more responsibility. We understand that, yeah. And that's why you guys are producing all that. You have AMP developer conferences all over the world all yeah. the time. You have crazy amounts of videos and documentation around that. You're doing these things. So you obviously are stepping up and that, that's the point of this conversation is an SEO myth busting. Mm -hmm. So SEO myth busting session is that you want to make sure that even though you have all these theories out there, all these myths or whatever it might be, you're doing whatever you can because you know of the responsibility Google yes. has to kind of give as much information as you possibly can yeah. to the SEO community and the publishing community because of that. Yeah, and we are aware of this responsibility and we're taking it very, very seriously. Uh, you can also see that by, if you look at when we launched the Evergreen Googlebot, we didn't just like throw it out there. We could have just said like, we'll test in production and see what happens. We didn't. We made sure that we are not causing adverse effects to other people first. And um, that's what we're trying to do. And I would love the community to understand that we are not an antagonist. We're trying to do what we can to bring good qualified traffic to people. And we're trying to put out as much information as possible. That's why we're filming videos like this. And that's why we're writing all this documentation. Um, and I would love to, for people to not have like these snap moments where they just like jump on whatever it is at the time, um, but like be more like considerate and trying to understand what's happening and like getting data for themselves and thinking for themselves rather than just like getting out the pitchforks. Right. I mean, I, people, I think people don't realize there's real human beings <laughs> at Google. And it was funny, I was having a conversation with Danny Sullivan, who's mm -hmm. the search li liaison uh, at Google now, and he was basically saying, yeah, Googlers don't have skin, we're robots, because people just talk to Google like they're a company and there's yeah. real people there with real feelings and just because something you know, don't agree with something at Google or whatever it doesn't mean you should really like just yell your head off at whoever you're talking mm -hmm. to because people have feelings they and there are real feelings. people there. Sometimes I have a bad day and then when I read certain things on Twitter I'm like ah why am I doing this? I apologize for those tweets. No it's fine. <laughs> you, this, not you. It's okay. Mostly. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's, it's fine. Um, that, that just happens and we have to deal with that, I guess. Um, that's, that's part of the deal of working at Google is also the, the side of where people are just disgruntled and angry. That's okay. Um, it's just sometimes when it's... What I don't like is when it gets unfair, when people are twisting your words and are basically like calling you out for things that you didn't do or didn't say. That's like a really weird one. And when I get asked a question, I say no. And people are like, oh, so... 
look at the exact wording that he has used that must have been have like a secret hidden meaning i'm literally i'm not sitting there in my computer or at my phone uh thinking 20 minutes about like a sinister way to i'm not a lawyer i don't <laughs> you have to go through some training i guess yeah i, I mean I, i do go through, through some training but mostly like to make sure that i'm not confusing people right That's the that's the biggest risk. It's not like we're trying to hide something. It's more like, especially when I don't know something, I'd rather say I don't know. Right. And that doesn't mean and people are like, ah, so you can't say. It's like, no, no, no. It's not that I can't say. I literally don't know. Well, John Mueller said I don't know, and I asked him about what does I don't know mean. He's like, either I can't say, or I don't know. Um, <laughs> okay, so that's that's John's that's John. way of doing it. Yes. That's John's way of doing it. When I can't say, I'm like, I can't really say, or like, like. Or maybe for, I misunderstood what John said. So <laughs> who knows, right? But basically, I'll I'll say when I can't say something uh, because I think that's just fair to yeah. say like I I can't say that. For for instance, like if someone's like, so how do you how do you rate something for spam? And I'm like, I can't say that because if I would give this information away, how we're doing like spam detection and stuff, then spammers could use this information to game the system again. Right. Um, so I won't discuss that. Uh, I won't discuss ranking simply because I don't know much about it and I deliberately keep it that way. So Martin, why don't you want to know about rankings? I mean, it's a secret sauce. You go home, you just go <laughs> ahead and like build your own websites and make so much money on the side. Uh, so first things first, I think we should not know about ranking um, because we are trying to like represent the community as much as we can internally as we do externally as well. Uh, the other thing is uh, I'm just really bad at keeping secrets, so uh, that's why I don't want to know about like the ranking bits and pieces because if I accidentally blab them, then it's like not very helpful. Um, and also it keeps changing and there's so much going on and we have like hundreds of ranking factors and I don't think there is that much actionable bits and pieces in there. So I, I don't feel like we should be talking about it as much. We should be talking about what do our users want, what do our users need, how can we better understand it and how can we better deliver good web experiences. And we have a lot of work to do performance wise, content strategy wise, uh, literally just copywriting wise, like there's so much that we need to look into that I don't think that that's a fruitful discussion to have really. Yeah, but when you tell the community, just build the best possible website, they go back and start laughing, yeah, build the best possible, of course I think I have the best possible <laughs> website, but what can I do to make it better? Should I add HTTPS? Should I make it 0.5 seconds Fair. faster? Should I, Fair. there's specific things, so, like what should I, where are my priorities? Right, so I, I think, Oh, priorities is a tricky one because, as I say, like we keep like changing things a lot. Um, but so just print them on your Google Help Docs. Eh, <laughs> I'm not sure if that's a good idea. Um, but uh, you're right. Uh, there are a few technical things that you can influence and they should do, like HTTPS, making your website fast. Um, but these stem from again thinking user first. And I, I would see, I would love to see more companies doing user testing. As in like trying to understand who are your users and then actually having a conversation with them. Um, because what I think is the best content for my users might not be what the users think is the best content for them. And that's a reality that I've seen in all the companies that I worked at. Uh, the ones that did user tests learned a bunch from just having a five minute conversation with some yeah. of the users. And Google has a product, uh, Google Consumer Survey feature, I think. I, didn't I remember I, I got hit by that Panda update once a long, long time ago. <laughs> and John's like, why don't you ask your users what they think of your content? I'm like, okay. So I embedded one of those Google survey things mm -hmm. and then I published the results and they liked my content. So oh. Google went in there, changed the algorithm, made my website look really high. <laughs> <I'm sure. laughs> well, and you know, like just you know, you now know how it all works. <laughs> No, um, yeah, that's interesting. That I didn't know that we had that product. That's a good one. Yeah, and it takes literally just a second to embed. I don't know if mm. it's exactly called that, but it's like a, basically a little embed, and then it pops up, rate the site, and then based on how you rate it, what page you're on, ah. it gives you dynamic information to ask you more questions, nice. which goes into a Google spreadsheet, ah. which you can use to publish if you want. That's awesome. Yeah, that's really cool. Awesome. Now, thank you so much for being here, Barry. Uh, I think this was a really, really interesting um, conversation about community and how Google and the SEO community. Uh, work together or can work together and uh, I'd like to thank you all for watching the season two of SEO myth busting and um, listening to us and the other guests talking and uh, thank you very much and bye bye yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Why am I doing this? Yeah. <laughs> Not you. <laughs> Are you breaking up right now? <laughs> like what? <laughs>
Hello and welcome to SEO Mythbusters. Today I have. Yeah. What? SEO Mythbusting. <laughs> 